Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. This is everyone's kind of favorite new place in the house. Of course, it's not actually in the house, as you can see. My wife had the brilliant idea of turning this second back porch into a usable living space instead of a storage space. And it sure beats it. Look, when we look out the kitchen window, seeing this versus this. So I'm going to show you how we turn this into this. This is a fantastic place now to sit out, watch the kids play in the backyard, while we sit here and chat with friends and have a drink. So the first thing I built was the ottoman. I wanted to make sure that the style I was building looked good. I got the thumbs up, so I went ahead and built everything else to match. I also wanted to make sure that this was possible. The legs are just three quarter inch plywood. The top is three quarter inch plywood. It's not glued down so that the inside can be used for storage. There's a quarter inch piece in the bottom to form a bottom. And the sides are quarter inch plywood with two inch wide quarter inch strips glued on to the top. It's all just glued together. And this makes a wonderful seat, footrest, or coffee table. So I started cutting out some three quarter inch plywood here at an angle of 45 degrees. This miter joint is gonna give me the legs for the ottoman that I'm working on. Cut that side, then flip it over and cut this side so that I've got my 90 degree edge and my 45 degree edge. Then I go back and trim it here at 90 degrees for the inside part. Then run tape along the 45 degree bevel long sides after I butt them together, zigzag some glue here down the middle, and then fold them together and tape it until it dries. And so now here's my completed leg that I've trimmed off to 13 inches, marking one inch from the end because this will be where my side pieces stop. I've got some quarter inch plywood here with some two inch wide strips glued on top at two inch intervals. And now I'm gluing them into two of my legs. These are gonna overlap on the ends. So they, they won't, uh, they're all the same length, these side pieces. And so they're going to be staggered by the side width at each end and it'll go around. So I'm gonna make sure here, like so. Let me get a second piece here to pop in there. Make sure I've got my spacing right. Let's see, that's going to go like that. Flip that around, wedge that in there. This is quarter inch plywood, but it's, of course, not quite a quarter inch. So get my spacing there, line it up with my mark, and clamp it up like this. You can never have too many clamps. I still don't have enough. And a three quarter inch top piece here. I cut this one in two because I simply couldn't cut a piece wide enough on the table saw. Some little Velcro pieces here on the bottom of the cushion and the bottom of that and I'll smush it down here. The Velcro is stuck together and so I'm using the Velcro to position itself. And now we cut a bunch of three inch wide, three quarter inch strips for the legs and back frames for the couch. All right, do that a few more times. And here it is from this angle. Also not as exciting. And a 10 degree miter here on the three inch pieces that I just cut. This will tilt the back of the couch back 10 degrees. I decided that was the most comfortable angle and so it'll be tilted back 10 degrees. It also saves on material if I do it this way. And do another one here. And I've got a drawing and cut list at the end of the video for all this. And I can cut two at once, no problem. It was pretty windy that day. And so now I'm making a mark here on this back piece. And I've got my little angle finder here set to 10 degrees. And I'll make a mark across this. This is where the seat base is going to sit. I'm going to put two pieces on here. I've got four and I'll strike a mark all the way across so I can align them properly. Alrighty. Now these screws are one and five eighths. So it means they're about an eighth of an inch longer than the thickness of my wood. And so they did go into the concrete just a wee bit. Two per side here is all I need. And then when I flip it over, I'll put the two in the other direction so that they obviously don't hit in the middle of the wood. But you can see there, it kind of, yep, it got my concrete just a bit. So I'm going to prop this up here as I do it and then finish these screws off like so. Making sure that they uh, aren't in the same space because obviously screws can't occupy the same space. And I finish those out there. 
and this is one of the seat frames. There's three of these per couch. And it looks like so. And you can see the back is tilted back 10 degrees. And so some pilot holes here and some countersinking and some screws. I enjoy countersinking. You can see here I had to scoot this forward three inches because you'll see my mistake here in just a second. And my assistant and I cut this three quarter inch piece that's full. Oh, it's hard to do. There we go. That's hard to do, especially on a portable saw like this. But of course, as the piece gets smaller, it gets much easier. Now this is the seat bottom. And of course, my saw is only a 12 inch slider. And this piece is wider than that. So I just turn it around rather than flip it over because I want the tear out to be on the same side. And line it up and cut it like so. Perfect. And I'm making a mark for all my screw holes so that I can hit the inside piece of the seat frame because I don't want the screws right on the edge. I think that could possibly tear out way too easily. So I'm doing it this way since I've got two, two of the horizontal beams per seat. And screw on the center front there, like so. Just one screw in each one. And now I'll measure for the back. And okay, making sure they're all the same. The back's only a quarter inch plywood because that's all it needs. There's really no force on the back. So drill, countersink, and put the screws in. Nice. Make a mark for my lower set, like so. And let's do a test fit here with the cushions. Like I said before, these cushions are from Lowe's. They're a, a little over 50 bucks per set here. They come attached with the bottom and the back, but I had to cut them loose. Hmm. Well, and what's going through my head right now is I didn't compensate for the, back, the thickness of the back pillow. The height's good, but it's just a little bit too thick. So make some adjustments. So I scooted the um, bottom forward three inches and then inserted a three inch backing strip back there to fill that gap. Of course, on the second couch, I didn't do this. And then I routed a 45 degree chamfer, half the depth of my half inch plywood here, just to ease that edge a little bit. Since everything on this was kind of angular, I thought a 45 chamfer made more sense than a round over. And that's quick work of that. I do wish I had a plunge base at times, or maybe even a trim router, but this is all I've got for now. But it works fine for no more than I do. And you can see here, I got a little bit overzealous here, went around that corner on the start, but that's a pretty good chamfer. I'm happy with that. A little bit of sanding and that'll be great. So some quarter inch here on the front between the legs and some two inch wide strips, just like around the ottoman. Unfortunately, those screw holes don't get quite covered up but I'm able to use some scrap pieces here in between to allow those three trim pieces to be spaced properly. A piece of three quarter here in the front clamped on like so. We'll hold this in place. And then to apply tension to the top here, what I end up doing is using a block clamp to the bottom of the seat. And that applies pressure to the top of this little clamp bar like so. And then this in the middle and then one at each end will finish it off. There, that isn't going to move. And it's clamped up like so for a few hours. And you can see the other couch over there is already done. So now thinking about how I wanted to do this corner piece was a little bit tricky because I, I want to avoid complex cuts and things if I can. And I'm about out of this half inch Baltic birch. I'm on my last few pieces. So I kind of have to piece this piece together. It'll be interesting, but it'll work just fine. So in SolidWorks here, let me show you what, how I did this, since I didn't film this portion. If we pivot around here to the back side, you can see that I've inserted a little square that I screwed these back two corner legs to. Now, of course, the front legs are just that standard frame made out of four pieces of three quarter ply. This piece here runs abutted to one of the back legs and into one of those front legs. And then this one runs at a 90 degree angle to that. Now, of course, you have to pay attention to the order of assembly here because the screws, the outside portions of the main base have to be screwed in last. This back piece here is just a rectangle, believe it or not, 30 inches wide. And this eliminates the compound miter here at the corner. And then this one is just a standard miter cut. And this is supported 
by this one inch wide three quarter strip here in the corner all glued together. This was a much much simpler corner joint and it's extremely strong. You can see there how that rests against that. And of course those corner top caps do just have a 45 degree miter and they screw down into the four leg pieces. Here on the edge you can see this top cap that's half inch plywood has a 10 degree miter on the front and the back is not at all. And then here in the front in that gap I did apply some of that trim that I glued up and then 45 degree cut and then uh, glued up together after I folded it in half like before. But you can see here this frame is really rather simple. It just kind of looks complicated and it took me a bit to think this through how I was going to do it. But this of course is in the cut list at the end. We've also added some string lights here, LEDs from Harbor Freight. They were just a little over 20 bucks. It makes a really great amount of light for nighttime out here and you can even read by it should you want to. We took the small TV out of the spare bedroom mounted it on an articulating arm from Harbor Freight as well. This is now awesome. We've got our HD antenna, but then we've also got a Roku, so we can pretty much watch anything we want out here. To keep the bugs out, I'm also running a $50 experiment from Harbor Freight, and I got a two, actually, screens that are made for double garage doors. And this lets us see, well, does it keep the bugs out? How much do we really use this space? And we figure out what can we really do now that this is somewhat screened in. And for 50 bucks, I figured this is a really low risk way to see kind of how we want to do this. Do we want to move ahead and put in permanent screens? Do we want to build a small wall and end up glassing this in? I don't know. But now we can keep the bugs and the leaves and stuff out of here for only 50 bucks. Well, you can see it really wasn't all that difficult. A couple of screws, a lot of glue and some cutting. If you've got some basic tools, you can definitely do this yourself. Just don't be afraid to try. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.